Hey guys, how are you? My name is Rafiq Wayani. And what I want to do is I want to present uh, PowerShell to you. Specifically, I want to show you how to take a CSV data file and I want to put I want to show you how to put it into MySQL using Windows PowerShell. Here's my CSV file. And I'm using the Simply SQL module that's available. Uh, I shouldn't say in. So this is available for. <laughs> it's available for PowerShell, not just version 5.1. I'm using PowerShell version 5.1. It's available for PowerShell, but I'm using this. I'm also using Windows 10. I'm using MySQL version 8, and my CSV file right over here is located on the C drive okay, in the work folder. So I've got my SQL right here on the bottom left here and on the top left I've got my PowerShell environment. Let me show you simply SQL first. I essentially have I'm gonna do a import module simply SQL and that will import it and you will notice that I have the simply SQL module listed right there. Okay. In order for you to get that you have to do two things. So to get Simply SQL in PowerShell, make sure you have PowerShell version 5 or later. You issue a command called find module Simply SQL. Once it finds it, because it'll go out to it will go out to the PS gallery and grab it. And once you have it, you can simply do an install module, simply SQL. Now, PowerShell is not case sensitive, so it doesn't matter if you have this in uppercase or lowercase. Okay. So these are the two things you have to do to grab simply SQL. And once you have simply SQL, you can simply do <laughs> import module simply SQL, just the way I did. Okay, just the way I did, and uh, you'll be able to see it okay and after you do that if you do a get module simply SQL you'll see that it's loaded just like I see it being loaded okay so here I am in my SQL and in my SQL I'm essentially going to create a database and I'm gonna call the database PS demo and I'm gonna use the PS demo database and I'm going to create a table and I'm going to call the table user data. And in the user data table, I'm going to create an ID column that's going to be an integer data type. I'm not going to allow nulls in there. I'm going to make this column a primary key. And I'm going to make sure that it will auto increment so I don't have to manually add primary keys. Primary keys are unique uh, data in here, or unique numbers, essentially. I don't need that column. I just created one so that I will have a nice numbers around what I'm adding. Okay. Then I'm going to create a username column, which is right here as you can see. So I've got a username column, a zip code column, and I've got a city column. Okay, So these are the one, two, three, four, five, six rows of data that I have with six zip codes and six cities. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a username column that's going to be a very well linked character, 20 maximum characters. I'm going to create a zip code column that's going to be a variable length character. I'm going to make it 10, make sure that is not allowing any nulls. And finally, I'm going to have a city column that's going to be 20 characters, and I'm not going to allow null in there either. When I describe the user data column, you notice I see the ID column that I created, the username column, the zip code column, and the city column. Okay. I'm going to manually insert uh, one row in there. I'm going to insert into my user data uh, table. And I'm going to insert the username, the zip code, and the city. And I'm going to put test user, test zip. And finally, I'm going to put in test city. Make sure that it enters. There you go. And I'm going to do a select star from user data so that I can see it. Okay, so here is the data that I just entered. 
Here is the syntax, the insert statement essentially that I use to enter the data in. Here's the thing though, in um, PowerShell, I'm going to have to establish connection to my MySQL database. Once I have established a connection, which is uh, very easy, I'll show you, <laughs> with Simply SQL is very, very simple. Simply SQL doesn't only let you connect to MySQL, it'll let you, con let you connect to SQL Server as well. Very easy to do that. Uh, so once I've done this and I've tested this, and I know that my database is PS Demo. PS Demo is my database, and user data is my table. Okay? And here are the columns in the table. ID is the only one that is automatically incrementing. And the auto increment part is making it possible for this ID to be entered by itself. I didn't put in that one there. That happened because I inserted this first row. And this first row right over here that I inserted, I put in the test user, the test zip, and the test city. And let me connect to the PS demo, PS demo database, okay, in here. Uh, first of all, I'm also going to go to the work directory where my, uh, where my CSV file is, because i got to bring that in here. And I'm going to do uh, open MySQL connection, and I'm going to say that my server is localhost, because I've got the, um, I've got the, MySQL database installed on this Windows 10 box. For the database, I'm going to say it's PS Demo. And for credentials, I'm going to pass in get credentials. I'm going to have it ask me for credentials. This is the credentials for my MySQL database. Okay, So the fact that it came back really means that it found my server, my MySQL server on the local machine, because it's right here. I know it's on the local machine. If it wasn't on the local box, I would specify the DNS name of the machine here. This is a database I'm opening. So that means it found the database as well. This credential uh, allows me to specify uh, the user ID and password that I want to pass in. Okay. So now if that is connected, I want to see if it's actually working. So I'm going to do an invoke SQL query not copy, <laughs> query, and I'm going to say select star from user data, right? And there it is. This is the user data table, the user data table. So I essentially ran this, yeah? So I know that this works. It grabbed the data. So I know it ran it against the database, so I know that that is working. And this um, CSV file, okay? I'm going to do that. So I'm going to do user data, and I'm going to say import CSV, and it's going to be users. And if I do a user data, there is my CSV file. Great, isn't it? Nice and simple. And I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six rows. Yeah? And what I need to do is I need to create a string. I need to create, well, essentially, I need to create a for loop that will look through every one of these rows in the CSV file and dump them in here. What I want to happen is when I run this query in my SQL, I want these six plus this row to come up. So uh, let's do this together. Okay? I'm going to create a for each loop and I'm going to for each user in user data. I'm going to construct a SQL string and I'm going to say insert into user data, username, zip code, city. I need to construct this right here. See this right here? I need to construct that. And I need to construct it into a string. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this var into uh, the invoke SQL query uh, commandlet. That's going to dump that data row by row, row by row from the CSV file into the MySQL environment. So now that I've written this out, I actually have to write the rest of it. I have to write the values and then open uh, parentheses, open single quote, grab the username from the user data object. The user data object has a username column, a zip code column, and a city column. So dollar user data dot username will give me L. Ellison 
the first iteration. It will give me J. Henry the second time, G. Johnson the third time, and so on. Dollar user data, which is the object var. Dot zip code will give me the zip codes. Dot city will give me the cities that correspond to the row that I'm at. So this for each loop is going to go through six iterations. And it's going to store each iteration or each row in the user var that I constructed right here. So user data is this whole thing. User is going to be the current iteration of the user data. Okay, so first time it's going to be the L. Ellison row. Next time is going to be the J. Henry row, and so on. Okay, so right over here, I'm going to do values, open parentheses, single quote, double quote, plus. I need to concatenate this whole thing. So I'm going to do user, user data, user data, dot username. That's going to give me the name. Then I'm going to do concatenate. I'm going to close the single quote, comma, open the single quote, close, uh, open the quotes, do a plus, concatenate the username zip code column. Then I'm going to, again, do the uh, double quote, single quote, comma, single quote, double quote, concatenating this. And then finally, I've got not username, user data. I got to do this right way. There you go. Then I would do user data dot city plus that. Okay. So I've got the whole thing now. What's going to end up happening is uh, this is going to create the open parentheses, just like it is right there. That parentheses right there. That single quote, that single quote is that single quote right there. This dollar user data, this dollar user data dot username is going to be user data, which is this entire object, this entire object, and username is going to be the username column. Since it's doing a for each, it's in the current iteration. So it's going to be grabbing that. Then I close the single quote. I close a single quote right here. See that? And then I do a comma, and then I open a single quote. So there's a closing of the single quote, there's a comma, and there's the opening of the single quote. And then I close the double quote because I'm concatenating. Then I concatenate the zip code the same way. User data dot zip code from the current iteration. So the current iteration, here's something someplace else that I'm wrong. See the user data right over here? That needs to say user. It needs to point to the current iteration. User. User. Got to do it the right way. User. Okay. User is the current iteration. User data is the entire thing or the entire object set right over here. I don't want the whole thing. I just want the current row. So the current row is represented by user. Okay. So I'm going to press uh, enter here. And then I'm going to say invoke, invoke SQL query. And I'm going to do a SQL string like so. Close the braces and it ran it. Yes, these uh, yellow things, if you will, are warnings, essentially telling me that it didn't return any data. And I'm perfectly fine with that. It ran them just fine. So, right over here, if I run this, notice all the data is in there. Look, there's all, there are all my rows, okay? And it added them in pr perfectly, okay? Furthermore, if I do, um, uh, you, if I do dollar SQL user and I do a invoke SQL query and I say select star from user data, okay, and I do SQL user, I can see, for example, it invoked the the SQL query, the select statement, and it placed the results inside of the SQL user object. Take a data from uh, CSV file, place it into MySQL using the Simply SQL module. I'm really glad you were here.